sitting here in my car. I went to a funeral service today for um, Mendisa. She was a former church member of mine. We used to sit on the same pew together at church and had um, several exchanges with each other. Um, she was always very kind, such a light um, to me and to others. But while I was at her funeral service today, it was just like the blinders, the scales on my eyes were taken off and I came to the realization that myself and probably so many others haven't fully lived, like stepped outside of our current circumstances, our current day-to-day -day mundane monotony, like of everything that's going on and really just lived. And there were so many things that were stated during the service that really resonated with me and really spoke to me and my situation. And I was just kind of reminded that we only have this life and it's ours to live. Um, I feel like over the past four, five years, I have, I've been sinking and just kind of like shrunk um, into this shell of a person that is surrounded by these built up walls, this fortress. <laughs> And it wasn't even to keep people out, but it was also to keep me in. Um, and it's unfortunate. I feel that even beyond those four to five years, maybe, if I'm being honest, maybe eight, nine years, Even beyond that, even I would say even beyond that, the encounters that I've had with people have been dictated by and filtered through this lens of me being a hurt individual, a traumatized individual, someone that was completely guarded. And I realized that I did not have the complete fulfillment of what those relationships could have been had I been walking in my full and authentic self. And so I can paint a picture just from a previous example. Years ago, I was um, attending a church and prior to going to this church, I was very positive, happy, upbeat, outgoing. I had a core group of friends that I was really solid with. And we hung out all the time. We went out all the time. We had a really good time. We would have Bible studies together. We took trips together. We would have sleepovers. We had such a great time. And each and every individual was sort of like the life of the party in their own right. Um, and I loved that group. I loved who I was as a person within that group and even outside of that group because who I was with this group was who I was. Um, but once I started going to this church, there were things that happened, not any fault of my own, but there were people that had, I don't know, like almost like a vendetta against me and against a couple of other people. And they began to taint 
others' views of myself and a couple of my friends based on nothing. And so I shrunk in that environment. I did not thrive in that environment. And for years, I felt like I was always on the defense trying to prove that I'm not who this other person painted me to be in the eyes of other people. And in so many ways that kind of shaped my personality during that time. Um, and so because it shaped my personality, I became a defensive person. I became this person that was I don't know, I felt like I had to make myself small. I felt like I couldn't truly be my authentic self because I didn't know how it would be received. I didn't know who had listened to this person. I didn't know what was even shared. Um, it did come back to me later and years later, this individual did apologize <clears throat> to me for the seeds that they had sown to others, but I don't think I ever really got a clear answer as to what was sown and why it was sown. But there was repentance and I did forgive. But even now, facing some of these same individuals that I shrunk myself when I was around them years ago, I still hang on to this thought that, man, of all the years that they knew me, they really didn't know me. And I often wonder what if, what would these relationships be like now had it not been tainted by these seeds that were sown and had I not shrunk or had been this defensive person. And I'm thinking about all of this while in this funeral service because at one point they shared some like home video or just video of Mandisa and she was just so lively very exuberant just joyful um and just really being herself and it made me sad because I'm not gonna cry on a video I saw the old me in that video. I saw the Sophie that wasn't led by trauma, that wasn't tainted by other people's views of her or care and concern about what people might think about her and I miss that I miss that girl I miss that Sophie Sophie now is scarred her heart is hardened I've had relationship after relationship after relationship and when I say relationship I'm mostly talking friendships that some might say have failed um, and if you've had friends for 10 15 years then losing those relationships it really is like a death it's like a part of you is lost because with those relationships and those friendships, it's like they awakened something in me um, or not even awakened, but it was like that comfort of being able to just be. And we travel a lot. Um, and when I say travel, like move and it's almost with each move, it's like starting over and having to realign yourself with a new church or a new job, a new environment, new neighbors, and starting to build community again. 
and I think that's a lot easier when you have your constant friends that regardless of where you are where you move to you still can call up your girlfriend hey let's catch up but with the loss of these friendships I didn't have that I've been a homemaker for the past five years so I don't go into the workplace um that confidence that I once had that was often encouraged um, within the friendships that I had um, is not there. And it's like for the past five years, five plus, it's like I feel like I should apologize to the people that I've met and befriended because they haven't gotten to really know the true me. I give glimpses here and there. We hang out. We have a great time. I've met some really, really amazing people and I'm completely blessed to have met them. But I feel that I've done a disservice to them because I haven't been a good friend to them. I feel like I've been so hurt and scarred by people that I don't allow them to get that close. And I can say that with certainty <laughs> that I keep things very surface, very surface, because I don't allow people that connection to me. Um, it's one of those things when you've been hurt by people, that trust is hard to, to earn for me. Like, it's really hard. Um, and I know I'm just kind of rambling. I don't even know what the purpose of this video is, even beyond just a video journal, but... Being at that funeral, I feel the Holy Spirit just telling me that like God was saying to me, daughter, it's time for you to live. Life is short. Our time here is brief. And I don't want to leave here with shallow relationships with people, not walking in my purpose, not walking in the fullness that God has created me to be. He didn't want us to be a shell, like our own representatives. He put us here for his glory not to shrink down, not to be muted, but to live, to touch people, to be a light, to make disciples. And we can make disciples by living our lives fully and completely committed to him. And even with my hesitancy of allowing people in, I feel that I have blocked that connection for me to even be a true disciple. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. When I leave here, I want to be able to say, God, I'm bringing some people with me and not with me in death, but that because of their connection with me, because of meeting me, that they have been, that seeds have been sown into their life that leads them to Christ. That seeds have been sown that have shown them life, light. I don't wanna leave here and 
nobody can have any personal stories of anything or that it's just Sophia was just here I don't know I guess I'm just in my thoughts but I just want to encourage you all to live um this isn't my usual video I pulled up in the driveway because I like I said just left the the service and I wanted to get it out. I needed to verbalize what I was feeling. I have to get to a place where I don't allow past situations, past trauma or drama, <laughs> um, and occurrences to change me who I am at the core for the worst. I feel like a lot of times things happen to us or, you know, we experience certain things and it can make us bitter or it can make us better. And in my case, I can really see where it has made me bitter and not better. And I just want to encourage you as I'm encouraging myself don't let those, don't allow those things to cause you to be bitter. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And I truly believe that we were meant to be here for one another. Um, we need human connection. We need each other. And I want to put forth a concerted effort on this day, April 27th, 2024, to get back to, and not even back, to be a better me, to be a better Sophia, to show the world that I'm no longer in hiding. I want to be able to live out loud. I want to have that joy renewed and with discernment um, to allow people in and to also allow myself, give myself permission to fully and freely be me. I was it? You got you got goggle face going on. <laughs> Look at that goggle face. Anything you want done, baby, I do it naturally. Oh, oh, oh.